Welcome to WTF, West Bank Talks Finance, the podcast that turns WTF moments into knowledge that you can use to make informed financial decisions. Subscribe to get notifications when we release new episodes. Hi everybody, I am Rima, one of the JV heads at West Bank, and today we're here to talk about guaranteed future value. I've got Jill here in studio with me, and she's very interested to find out more about guaranteed future value. Welcome, Jill. Thanks, Rima. Yes, I've been looking at I'm getting a new car, and I've heard about this guaranteed future value. Um, Could you tell me a bit more about how that works? What's different to a normal installment sale? So a guaranteed future value, like the name states, is a product that guarantees the value of your vehicle at the end of your finance contract. Um, What makes it different to a normal installment installment sale is um, the finance term is shorter. Um, You've got the guarantee of the value of the vehicle at the end of your contract. And at the end of your contract, you have a few options. Um, So your options are you could opt to keep your vehicle after settling the guaranteed future value at end of term. Or alternatively, you could trade in your vehicle through a dealership. And the final option you have is to return the vehicle, as long as the fair wear and tear conditions of the vehicle are met. Okay. You said that one of the options was that I can return the vehicle, right? Yes. And then, but if I I want to keep the car, um, now there's this huge guaranteed future value amount that I'm going to be outstanding. What are my options for paying for that? So you've got an option to settle that amount as a once-off lump sum payment, or alternatively, you could refinance that that value. And then would that work the same as a normal uh, refinancing installment sale? 100%. So you would go through the normal refinance process and and there there are T's and C's that that apply there, um, but you would have to apply so that you could refinance that portion. Okay, right. So then for my third option, if I'm going to um, return the vehicle as a trade-in and I'm going to get into my new um, guaranteed future value product, how can they guarantee that that value is going to be what that is in three or four years' time? I mean, they, the manufacturers would know what the general depreciation is for their kind of car. How would they know that I'm going to bring the car back in a state that they'll be able to resell it? How, how, how do they guarantee that? So, so, so when you return the vehicle, um, the vehicle needs to be in line with the fair wear and tear conditions. So when you enter into a guaranteed future value contract, an additional document that you sign is an, an annexure to the installment sale agreement, which covers the fair wear and tear conditions. So it talks to the condition the vehicle needs to be in when the vehicle is returned Um, and and if that's the option you exercise, right? When you trade in the vehicle, it's a normal trade-in process whereby you take the vehicle through to the dealer, the dealer will appraise the vehicle and then make an offer. Um, So so that's the fundamental difference. So when you return the vehicle and the bank takes back the vehicle, you need to ensure that the fair wear and tear conditions have been met and the mileage parameters have also been met. Okay, let's just look at the fair wear and tear things. Um, Obviously, people driving around, there's going to be, you might scratch something a little or you might go over some rough roads or that kind of thing. How much of that is is allowed? Does it have to be absolutely spotless when you bring the car back? So so we do, we do, we are aware that there is going to be some wear and tear to the vehicle. But, you know, we look, we're, in terms of the fair wear and tear conditions, we sort of talk to what size of scratch or dent is um, acceptable when you return the vehicle. And we also talk to factors like what condition the tires must be in. Um, so, so if there are little nicks and dents, you know, you will still be within fair wear and tear conditions. However, if, if there's a major scratch or a major dent, Um, then that could cause the guaranteed future value to actually fall away. But if there is that kind of a scratch, then could I get that repaired and then it would still be acceptable? Yes, you could get that repaired, but it would have to be repaired um, in line with, um, you know, manufacturer specifications and at a panel shop that is actually approved by the manufacturer as well. 
And and I see the same would go if the car was in an accident. 100%. Same story. 100%. So, um, yeah, you need to make sure that when you decide on the panel shop that's going to fix the vehicle, it's actually approved by the, 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 the manufacturer that, that of the brand of that vehicle. Okay. What happens if it's a really bad accident and the car is totaled or if the car is stolen? What happens then? So then you would follow the normal insurance claim process and when the, the, the claim is paid out, the bank will be paid. And if the, the amount paid out by the uh, insurance company is not adequate to cover the full outstanding balance, you would then be liable for, for the shortfall. So that's the same as a normal installment 100%. sale? Okay, 100%. right. Okay, then, um, so that's the, that's the fair wear and tear, that, that makes sense. Um, what, what about um, if I want to make modifications to the car, if I want to like add a, a roof rack or something like that, is that allowed? So you can actually add on OEM um, fitted extras, uh, but that does not increase the value or, or the guaranteed future value of the vehicle. So you can actually add on um, extras to the vehicle um, as long as it doesn't void the warranty. That's the first thing. And then secondly, we must be mindful of the fact that although you add on that extra, it could increase the value of the vehicle, but the guaranteed future value will not increase. Oh, right. Because that's the sort of thing that you would, if you were selling the car, you would add those extra features and you'd expect to get more money from it. But that doesn't affect the, the guaranteed future, future value, value because that's based on the, the car itself. 100%. Okay. What if somebody wanted to do something really major, like um, drop the suspension and add a sunroof and things like that? Would yeah. that be allowed or would that be like a total no-no because that's again... Yeah, so for me, it would be a total no-no because it could possibly void the warranty of the vehicle. No, that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that's... Um, what about servicing? Uh, um, if uh, Obviously, you would need to keep it serviced to be in the fair wear and tear conditions requirements. What happens if, if I miss a service or I miss a couple of services? So the vehicle would have to be maintained in line with the OEM specifications. So if the service intervals, as an example, are every 15,000 Ks, we need to make sure that we adhere to that. If we do not service the vehicle in line with the manufacturer's specifications, then you're not keeping in line with your fair wear and tear conditions and the guaranteed future value would fall away. Right. So then if... If you violate the, the guaranteed future value requirements, then you wouldn't be able to return the car. Yeah. You would then only, I, I would then only be able to, um, to buy it outright then because the guaranteed future value has fallen away and I now need to settle the outstanding balance. So you still, so, so you, you have that option where you would then, or you may opt to keep the vehicle and settle the outstanding guaranteed future value but you also have the option to trade in the vehicle. So you can go through to the dealership and they would then follow the normal processes to, to then trade in and make you an offer for the vehicle and then you would be able to trade in that vehicle. Okay, according to the normal way how, how you would trade in. Okay, that makes sense, yes. And then if there's, um, if the offer that the, the dealer offers me is less than what my outstanding guaranteed future value balance is, that I would be liable for that amount, right? Yes, you would be. Okay. So for servicing, do I need to take the car back to the original dealer where I bought it? Or can I get it serviced at my own, um, the, the person I usually have servicing my car? So you don't necessarily have to take the vehicle back to the dealership that you purchased the vehicle from. You could take it to another franchise dealer. Um, you could also get the vehicle serviced at a service center as long as it's approved by the manufacturer. Okay. Then um, the other requirement for, for, the, for the GFE, the mileage, how does that work? Can I change my mind about that halfway through that I, I need more mileage? So when you enter into the contract, um, we basically have two mileage options at this point in time. Um, first one being 20,000 Ks and the second being 25,000 kilometers. Um, so once you into the contract, there's no way that you can actually adjust that upwards or downwards. Um, and if you do exceed the mileage parameters, uh, then, then the guaranteed future value would also fall away. 
However, there is a bit of leeway built into that mileage. Um, so you could go a maximum of 2,000 kilometers over the mileage parameter and then pay in at AA rates. For right? each kilometer. For each over. kilometer, then you pay in at AA rates. But bear in mind that, you know, every year y you may not drive the same mileage. So at the end of the term, as long as the mileage balances out um, to to the mileage parameters agreed upon when entering into the contract, then we should be fine. So you could drive more in one year and less in the other year just to balance it off. Okay, thanks Rima. That, that really answers all my questions. Um, there's just one last thing. What sort of person would Guaranteed Future Value work best for? So Guaranteed Future Value would work for a person that wants to drive a new car more often. It'll work for a person that wants to always drive a vehicle that's um, on maintenance plan and within warranty. And it would work for a person that wants peace of mind in terms of what the value of the vehicle is end of term. Okay, and what sort of person would it not work for? Okay, so it would, it would not work for a person that does a lot of mileage because one of the requirements is that the mileage parameters are met. So if you are quite sure that you are going to exceed the mileage parameters, then the product is not for you. And it's not for an individual that um, does a lot of hard driving um, in the sense of, you know, um, where there's a heavy application of the vehicle, driving a lot of off-road, etc., because that's going to impact on the fairway and tear conditions of the vehicle. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. But if... Um so yeah, for somebody who just wants to drive to work, to possibly drive to Cape Town now and then, um, all on tarred roads, they look after their car, then guaranteed future value is, is, is definitely the, an option for them. It's a good option. Definitely a good option for them. Great, thanks Great. Rima. I've learned a hang of a lot. And yeah, you've answered very much all my, my queries about it. And yeah, it looks really like an exciting option. It is definitely an exciting option. I know you, you're looking to purchase your, your next vehicle and I look forward to signing you up on a GFE. Thanks for listening. We hope that you found it useful. Now go and subscribe to be notified when our next informative episode is available.